here with you guys and all of a sudden we're gone what four days without games three days it feels like we haven't had a break this long in three months basically <laughs> oh craziest time of year but yes it is the lck saying out of your slumber out of this break <laughs> we are coming back with a vengeance to kick off the gauntlet in the lck to figure out who are going to be the other two joining t1 and gen g as the representatives from the LCK and a good way to get started on will life versus KT Rolster. We talked about this yesterday. The first of the opportunities for KT to lock up that much needed uh, world's spot. Yeah, it's not do or die yet. This is the winner side of the bracket. So loser gets bumped down, but still you avoid being that fourth seed, at least be the third seed with a little bit of help hype from the LCK. But we know KT's history in the gauntlet and spoilers. It's not good. 2018, 2020, 2022, all losses, all missing out on the world championship. But only a, two weeks ago, not even, we saw KT 3 0 slamming Hanwa Life. And early on in this series, back to back, games one and game two, it was about some botched dives turning around, uh, botched dives by Hanwa Life that KT pretty easily capitalized on. And there was a couple of moments where you're like, you know what? Maybe if you don't greed it out just a little bit, and maybe it's not greed. Maybe it's just trying to say like, okay, you know, I don't want to give up too much, too many advantages here. I want to lessen the bleeding, all these type of things. And you stay too long, and the rest of KT Rolster is able to collapse, able to come together and get it going the way that Cuz was able to move in on the bottom lane, BDD, following it up just a couple seconds later, it almost looked like a replay going through those first two games, the way that he's able to pick up these kills, get these advantages, build this power up, where he is untouchable as it gets towards this mid to late game. Big time power coming through from the solo laners of KT Rolls. And you know what I love? A guy like Keen, who is perennially known as being a carry top laner, the star of a squad. He's getting well known for his Malphite gameplay these days, despite whiffing an ulti or two in that second game. Hey, it happens to the best of us. You better believe that one. But Keen, yes, this is a nice little additional wrinkle to what he has been able to provide throughout the course of his LCK career. Still, of course, I think that that is the preference for him to be playing more so towards that carry side, being that type of power, you know, outlet for this team. Same time, Malphite got the job done. There is no denying that one in this series. Game three, Hanwa finally shows some life and we get to see Mark's favorite pick in the whole world, the Nyla in the bot lane who casually went down about 40 CS in this game. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it still is one of these ones where I get the, the appeal, the desire to add this champion to some compositions, whether you're looking for that wombo combo or you're just banking on, again, that 200 years of Riot game design coming through, scaling up and having that power. A certain enough times, I think Nyla just lacks it compared to what is available right now, the options that you can use to shut it down. And especially when you're a skilled, you know, as the ADCs that we are seeing, I'm not seeing that Nyla pick make enough of a difference often enough. The low range really just makes her a liability, it seems, time and time again in the laning phase when she gets behind 40 CS. And I know there was jungle attention given by Grizzly in this matchup, but she just never was able to come online. Aiming didn't even die. He was 2-0-1 for the majority of this game, but was still almost 2,000 gold behind uh, what Viper was putting out. So Hama Life gets some life in that second or third game to force a game four and... There were signs of life in this game too. They do a completely different comp with the Rumble, Yone, Bit of Wombo combo. The problem is they only actually Wombo comboed once this whole game. Oh, it is the full extension of what has been the problem for Hanwha Life for so many parts of this year. And especially in this series, you go back to game two, you can also see obviously different, but another aggressive composition being built up by Hanwha Life and then not executed upon or not pushed to that type of level, that type of speed that is necessary to make these compositions work, to make them flourish, to pop off and build that strength on your players. It doesn't happen. And when you don't do that on these compositions, you just let the other team take over, take control of what they need to. And you better believe a squad like KT Rolster popping off right now, having the form that BDD and aiming both got as damage dealing. Yeah, you better believe that this one is a wrap. Yeah, the, the Yone 
didn't quite hit the mark. There were some very questionable ulties out of Zeka in this fourth game. And listen, peak DRX. We just finished talking, reliving that miracle run that DRX had Zeka popping off in all these team fights. But he is a guy who waits for his moment in these fights. And it's this is where it helps when on a team you have a couple of psychopaths like Piosic and Barrel to get things started. 100% that's something this Honda Life team's missing. Yeah, you can you can see that it is missing just that exact synergy, that right matching piece. It feels like kind of finding a, a bunch of puzzle pieces and going, well, this one kind of fits into it. And then just raw forcing, trying to sh shove them together and you've now ruined the puzzle pieces. It doesn't work out. And that is what we're seeing with Hanwha Life. I think the other thing that you can mention with Zeka and kind of these delayed engages is talking about the role that Barrel has played throughout his entire career. We've seen him the general, the guy that is always making these calls, making these decisions for his teammates, feeding them that information, that is a good reason why you see a lot of those plays played out and worked out on that DRX, and we're not seeing it quite flourish here with Hanwha Life. Part of that, of course, is on Zeka, the individual. Part of that is, of course, on the team, not working through it. But at the end of the day, it is going to be Hanwha Life getting ousted at this point and having to regroup, retool, and figure it out for that last spot at Worlds. And KT, the roller coaster, everyone can kind of put their hands in the cart, breathe a little sigh because it's no choke job in the gauntlet. They're going back to Worlds. First time since 2018 as an organization. Also the first time since 2018 that Keen has been to a world championship. And the first time ever we're going to see aiming on the international stage. Oh, man, this is just the 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 world's a first, my man. We're getting the first worlds in Korea with Faker getting to actually go. Another to curse the event. broken. Woo. Hey, add in the KT Rollster squad coming back. This is yes a good option for the LCK. I think there's gonna be people that have cooled off about how positive they feel about KT giving off the you know the consecutive losses to a T1. At the same time, I still think what we have seen from them here, what we saw from them in summer, there's plenty of reasons, plenty of options to be excited about this team heading towards Worlds. And I know excitement is scary for KT Roaster fans, but you should have some pride, have some uh, excitement in this one and feel good about your boys going to Worlds. I really wonder how different that playoff bracket in the LCK would have been if they didn't pick T1 right away because we saw KT match up well against Gen G. I honestly think it's just a mental thing and a terrible matchup for them against T1. If they had played Gen G in those semifinals, I don't know. We could have been looking at an entirely different bracket. So I think we should still be feeling good about KT because they are leaps and bounds above the other teams of the LCK, not named T1 and Gen G. Yeah, and then this is where the other part is going to come into it. And, of course, a nice reminder from going over that DRX run and, and how unexpected it was type of thing. I'm not quite sure we're going to get the same result coming out of this type of gauntlet for that last spot in the LCK. Not feeling the same vibes or hints that we have seen from the, you know, DRX was last year. Still possible. I'm going to give it a chance that when we get through. Hog one D+. This plus. They're not looking great right now, so... They're absolutely not, but I'm giving them the ch this chance in this last run for the gauntlet to give me that little bit of hopium that they're going to do something at the World Championship. Barrel on DRX, Deft on D+, Zeka and King and on Hanwha Life. Four DRX defending champions. Only one of those squads can now go because, thankfully, Mr. Piosik's already ready and waiting at Worlds, but he's got to watch his four former teammates duke it out. Uh, bro, Piosik is at home. He's, you know, he got the TL Honda compound center, whatever the heck it's called. He's grabbing an in and out burger, taking a bite and wiping it with Steve's cash. Life is good <laughs> for Mr. Piosik. He's already got worlds locked up. And we'll see which one of these other former DRX squads or players are the ones who are clinching that fourth seed to the world championship from the LCK. Another weekend, another two set of games for the LEC. We're going to keep harping on it because it's so unbelievably ridiculous. We're not getting G2 or Mad Lions playing this week. It's the beginning of the loser's bracket run, and we're starting BDS, who just lost to G2, matching up against SK Gaming, and the most insane stat of this weekend, Mark. SK Gaming, the last time they played a game 
was July 17th. We're heading towards six weeks since we last saw them on the Rift. That's at least two patches since then. And a lot of times when we see teams have these extended breaks between playtime, there's two paths that it goes down. One, they clean it all up. We figured it out. We have finally sorted things for our squad and you get that better result, that better product out there on the Rift. The other side, it's been too long. The rust has developed, the synergy isn't quite there. The flow of being in these matches and being in the zone, it's just not there for the squad because it has been so long. And as you get longer in these extended breaks, it's more likely that it is that option. That one where you do struggle coming out of it. That is my concern for SK because you best believe BDS, sure, they get a little bit of action last week. They get denied, of course, by G2 and you get put into this situation, now you've got that mojo from last week where you're going, okay, now we retool, figure things out, and you're already in that motion again of being in a competitive atmosphere where SK, you gotta come in hot off the bench. And BDS gets immediately dropped into the best team in EU, so the, the power level is already at this high level, whereas SK's only been scrimming for that latter part. But on the other side, Mad Lions were off for almost a month and bounced back for a 3-0 against Excel. Obviously had time to fix a lot of things. There's a lot of things to fix for SK as well. So very hard series to actually predict. Yeah, and it's going to be one of these type of ones where what are you banking on? Are you banking on that SK that kind of bloomed and showed us these signs early in the year that they could contend, could be in this type of territory at the later part of the LEC split? Or are you banking on BDS, where they rose to power in that spring split, showing us that potential, kind of uh, floundering and struggling a little bit through summer, not to the same expectation levels, set from spring. Which one is it going to be that you're betting on? BDS still absolutely should be the favorites. I would be surprised if SK come away with series win here. Fnatic and XL, the other matchup in the loser's bracket, a couple of weeks ago, these guys were fighting, throwing down for a spot in the finals of the summer split. And now here they are kicking off the loser's bracket. Only one of them can advance. I thought we might be getting both of these squads heading to the world championship. But alas, only one of them at best. And this is, I guess, you know, if we're going to be, you know, putting all this criticism on the breaks that we're getting with this LEC schedule, I will give credit over to what it has done for the likes of Fnatic and Excel building this type of attachment to this team and to what they have done where you're going, yeah, but they did so much and so much progress from everything else into summer. And then obviously maybe still not reaching that full heights in summer where you're going, but I would still want them to have this opportunity, this chance at the world championship. But you got to be taking care of business all year round in the LEC, stacking up them points to keep yourself safe. Otherwise, you get this, Excel and Fnatic, both squads that we would like to see have a more of an opportunity to lock up these spots for Worlds for the LEC down here already in the winner-die type of situation. And that does highlight the positives, again, as you said, of this new format, because when you're terrible for two straight splits, you're immediately put in a hot seat, even if you have a really incredible run in summer. It doesn't fully negate the bad two splits, but summer is still weighed more heavily than the other two splits which is what we're always asking for because that's the current form heading into world so i still think one of these squads whoever wins this is going to be representing at the world championship but i honestly thought both of them might have. Yeah, well i mean you turn back that clock now what feels like six eight weeks ago at this point yes you could have been having those type of feelings right now it is that do or die and heading into this one i think that you have to be again putting a lot of the similar things that we talked about in the past series. Same here with Fnatic. They got to show up and be ready to roll, ready to get that engine back up to running speed for the LEC. Where meanwhile, Excel, they have this opportunity to go, okay, we just went through it with the Mad Lions. We've got things to improve off of that. Right into the next series against Fnatic after this week. Going to be excited for me at the least to feel how these play out and get more understanding of what this is playing out with the LEC's new schedule change. I feel like Fnatic is a team that, you know, 
mentally can can be fragile at times but i feel like they're gonna have the mental edge going into this series because one they just lost in that xl matchup in not just again three weeks ago lost in those semifinals but have plenty to learn from probably i would hope know what went wrong for them in that series and now they have back-to-back -back series to glean information of excel losing first to g2 in those grand finals in 3-0 fashion and then losing to Mad Lions in 3-0 fashion. So back-to-back 0-3s -back for Excel, probably not feeling the highest that they have in a long time, and Fnatic has plenty of ammunition to see how to get it done to make sure they come away with the win. That is that good counterpoint. That is at the same time, yes, you did get that action. You are gonna be rolling through with what preparations you wanna make compared to last week. You also better believe that squads like Fnatic, SK Gaming, they also saw how you lost last week and are making notes on what those mistakes, what those shortcomings were and how best prepare to attack for that one. LEC, now is the time. Let's get a little bit of excitement brewing and rolling for you guys. I know it's hard with all these stops and starts and all the time in between the breaks. Every other region has got it going. We've got some hype, got some excitement. It's now Europe's turn. Easiest way to get hype is to have elimination matches where your entire year comes to an end and it's on the line. And that's what we're getting this weekend. Wouldn't be a world championship and it wouldn't be Riot Games without a little bit of drama off the rift. Now looking like the co-streaming for this year's world championship. Cut. Not going to be a thing and it's already in place. you see seeing guys like Cadrill who want to co-stream as they have been all split long. The LCK gauntlet. But Riot deems, because it's world qualification on the line, that it is part of the world championship. So he couldn't co-stream it. He's just doing the old throwback with the timers and everyone can watch along. But this is a kind of last minute pivot a month and a bit before the world championship happens. And I imagine a lot of people aren't going to be happy about this. Oh man, the LS uh, nemesis, I will dominate throwback to go in with to say this is the timer, follow along with it type of stuff. And this is a bad choice for me. I know that there's going to be other layers to this one and ones that I simply just don't extend, don't understand because of not having that type of knowledge, that type of information on that type of back end with Riot Games. At the same time, I can tell you from that fan perspective, from someone that is interacting with that e with that landscape ecosystem for League of Legends and for these world championships, this is not the call. This is not the way you want to be growing the game, growing your fandom and viewership of this event. Sure, if you want to hyper focus on making sure your official stream has as big a number as possible, this is one of the ways that you can artificially try to increase and induce that by having no other option than that. But at the same time, I feel the value of what you are getting from these coast streams, the extra outreach and expansion of viewership in that type of way, even if it's not directly for you, Riot Games, it's for your game. It's for League of Legends. It's for this event. Absolutely. I think this is a missed opportunity and a missed strike against what is the League of Legends community and how some of them choose to enjoy the way that these games are shown. Yeah, the only thing I can... The only way I can see it is they want more eyes on the advertisements, the sponsorship segments, the commercials in between streams. Because, you know, a co-stream, it's it's muted or the volume's turned all the way down of the actual broadcast for the guy talking over it. They're not talking about sponsorships or anything like that. So that's the only angle I can see. And if that's the case, kind of reeks of desperation from Riot to be getting people's eyes on that because 100%. There's going to be more viewership when all these popular streamers are co-streaming the whole event. And it, it does seem like a miss. They can still probably pivot before Worlds. I could definitely see them testing the water. And when everyone comes running at them with the pitchforks, angry about not allowing it, they say, we were just kidding, guys. Of course you can co-stream. And maybe they'll come out with something like, oh, like yeah, after the play-ins. Here it is. Now you can do some co-streaming or whatever type of stuff until we get to the knockout round. Okay, whatever type of stuff. <laughs> Uh, look, I think that this is still not the way to do it. I think that co-streaming has been a good avenue to grow the game, to grow, uh, you know, the type of viewership and fan bases that you can develop for this with the type of outreach that you get with these co-streams. And again, it all is up to the, the choice of the fan, how they choose to take in this content, how to interact with you and what you've got. 
And as you mentioned, even those advertisements, there are ways to get those advertisements through regardless of sound and all these other type of things, other ways you implement it. And I only bring it up because again, we've seen you do it before. So it is a standard that we can set for you. I understand if advertisers, maybe they're more specific, they're more complaining, want this type of coverage. That's out of my realm, I get that. But right now from the fan perspective, not a good choice. And maybe they don't like these streamers cash it in, making big bucks on their content, which by the way, tons of people already do. But the fact that Kadrill straight up chose not to cast MSI this year and to co-stream it, I'm assuming because he knew his viewership would be through the roof and it was and was probably more lucrative than him actually hosting the event. Maybe that's something that Riot doesn't want uh, happening again, but who knows? We'll see how this uh, develops going forward. A little bit of fun news. We talked about Team Liquid. Uh, you know, PL6 sitting there having a good time. If you don't know who won Magic Johnson is, NBA Hall of Famer, Lakers legend, and an investor in the parent company of Team Liquid. So let's just have that caveat. But I heard someone told me that he was tweeting about League of Legends, about Team Liquid, and I, I didn't believe him. I said, no, 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 no. Had to look it up, and he says he's proud of the Team Liquid boys, the season they had. Can't wait to see them at Worlds. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. But Magic Johnson's tweeted about Team Liquid, Mark. Oh, I didn't have this one in the cards, man. Before I had Team Liquid off. Yes, the Magic Johnson, Michigan State's finest, coming through and saying, let's go Liquid. Oh, my goodness. There's I did not see it. No chance he's watched a minute of LCS this whole year. Right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm split on it because you know what? Part of it, 50% of it absolutely reads that someone fed him a line saying hey this thing that you're invested in is going on maybe just send out a little thing about this part of it is maybe it's an intern just jumping at the same time magic johnson is relatively well known for being someone who is invested and actually cares about what he is invested in gets a little bit of information keeps up with these type of things who knows maybe he's one of those guys in chat spamming along with the rest of us watching the lc maybe he's low-key a uh, diamond and solo queue maybe a yumi main uh, you know oh. <laughs> nah, I've, man he there's no way he's a yumi main my man he's he got that dog in him just like piosik he's out there playing on that kindred he loves getting out there in the league of legends didn't see this coming no way we got to be building our old NBA League of Legends team. Let's get Shaq. He's got the NRG investment in here. Where was Shaq back. when NRG won the whole split? He should be tweeting about it. Yeah, what's come on, Shaq, man? Bring on old Rick Fox. Bring in Gordon Hayward. We already got four out of the five. Come on, Nikola Jokic, recent NBA champion. Add him, too. There's the starting roster. That's a pretty damn good starting five in the NBA. Probably a terrible <laughs> starting five in uh, League of Legends terms, but... We hey, don't ask us to shoot free throws either, okay? We're giving those ones up. No, we'll give those up. But uh, <laughs> listen, it's only good for the game, even if Magic Johnson has not watched a single second. All these people who follow Magic Johnson, millions and millions of followers on Twitter are probably saying, what the hell is this guy tweeting about? But all it takes, they click on Team Liquid and see, oh, he's talking about League of Legends? Hey, you want to talk about... Any type of publicity, any type of coverage is good coverage. Well, this is actually good coverage as well on top of that one. Yes, blessed be, Mr. Magic Johnson. Love to see you coming through. Enjoy the time, enjoy the stay, and hey, maybe pop in for a little bit of extra League of Legends time with the World Championships. Can't wait for him to tweet Team Liquid's exit without a win at the World <laughs> Championship. Good try. We'll see you again next year, boys. But that's it today for League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.